she set her titties on fire. Yummy set her titties on fire. Sets her mash to these things. <laughs> that was a cool trick. I wouldn't learn how to do that trick. I thought about doing that trick for you guys, and I was like, I'm gonna mess around and set myself on fire, and I'm not playing them games. Before I do something like that, I need to find out the proper way because dealing with pyrotechnics is no joke. Excuse the birds in the background. Apparently, they don't know a kitty cat. <laughs> Eat them. Yep. PC Purrs here, and I'm back for the final review for this season of Jocelyn's Cabaret Atlanta. So we start this episode with just a recap of the whole season, and of course, when they recap it, it's mostly fights because it wasn't a whole lot of dancing that we saw. So that's kind of annoying, but it was entertaining looking back at everything that happened. I will say it, it was more entertaining than I thought it was going to be. So then Jocelyn has this setup where she's going to have the girls come up to her two by two and she's going to tell them who won out of the two. So the first two up are Yummy and Miss Natural. And she calls Yummy forward and she starts telling her how she was doing well throughout the season, but tonight wasn't her best night, so she's got to go. Miss Natural falls to the floor and she's just crying tears of happiness that she won. Yummy sneaks, in, well, not sneaks, but she takes off her shoe and just starts beating her over the head with it. Just snuck her with it. It was, <laughs> Ballistic was called a little scumbag. It was funny, but it just came out of nowhere. It was a real punk move to take. And then Miss Natural is crying and hugging Jocelyn. Jocelyn's telling her not to mess up her moment. Then Yummy has a complete break, like a complete breakdown, and she's like being escorted out. And I guess Chanel was in her path, and she just starts beating Chanel, pops her in the mouth. Chanel's like, "What did I do <laughs> to get hit by her?" <laughs> it came so out of nowhere. Yummy is like, "If you in my way, you can get it to anybody. Can get it." So they get outside, and Yummy is just popping mad shit, saying how. <laughs> Anybody could get it, how she's just going off, just being crazy, just losing it, standing on furniture, her whole butt is out, standing on, what was it, a Jeep or a car or something, and in her confessional, she was saying that she was triggered and that she's been through a lot, like sex trafficking and racism, just all types of things, and she just really, really lost it. She probably needs some therapy, too. Definitely needs some therapy, too. And it's unfortunate because she really was a good dancer, and she should have just stayed focused and stuck it through. But that's the end of, that's the end of Yummy, and Miss Natural can go ahead. But she busted her toe in the whole fight, so now she's got to dance on a busted toe. She set her titties on fire. Yummy set her titties on fire. In her confessional, she's sitting there saying she went out in a blaze or whatever, and then she just <laughs> sets her match to these things <laughs> and sets her nipples on fire. I'm like, all right, all right. That was a cool trick. I want to learn how to do that trick. I thought about doing that trick for you guys, and I was like, I'm going to mess around and set myself on fire, and I'm not playing them games. Before I do something like that, I need to find out the proper way because dealing with pyrotechnics is no joke. Don't be out there trying to set your titties on fire. It's a little party trick, and you don't know what you're doing. You mess around and set yourself on fire, so relax. I'm going to look into how we can do this. Anyway, no, that is not the tutorial for today. No, no, no. <laughs> So then the next two that go up are Chanel and Boss Tech. And Jocelyn seems like she's really in her feelings about this whole $10,000 that Boss Tech had in the beginning that she was playing with in her room. And oh, I wish I could just play with $10,000, just toss it up in the air and let it just rain down on me. Anyway, um, and I don't Oh, Jocelyn just seems a little insecure to me in that moment because she was saying what are you doing but shaking your butt in a booty club and I'm making real money and just going off on Boss Tech and Boss Tech really took it like a lady she was just like okay well I'm still thankful for this opportunity and when they went in the back I will say one thing I liked about this episode, all the girls were really supportive of the ones that made it. So she was like, I didn't get it, Chanel got it, that's my boo, I'm happy for her, she deserved it. That was really nice. And Chanel was like, I can't believe I got a uniform and I'm so happy because they're all getting uniforms to perform tonight. We'll talk about these uniforms in a second, but, so they were cute. The next two are the Lexes. So we got Big Lex and Lexi Blow. And, 
Jocelyn says that they're two of her favorites. And then she says Big Lex is a sweetheart. And they show a little flashback. And Big Lex was starting all the fights. So how is she a sweetheart? I don't know what Jocelyn sees a lot of the time. Like, I want to give her a benefit of the doubt for growth. But unless there's just something we're not seeing, I'm like, sweetheart is not something I got from her. Maybe it's inside. I don't know. So she tells them, of course... Lexi Blow got it. We know her choreography was on point. Her choreography <laughs> was on point. <laughs> so that was dope. Um, and of course, Big Lex was happy for her and she wasn't hating. So that was good. Then the last two are Sapphire and Lucky, the two from last season. And we already know Sapphire kept messing up and Jocelyn was on her about it. So she chooses Lucky and she tells her that she's the weakest link, though, so she needs to get it together. <clears throat> all right, so now all the girls that didn't get chosen go sit in the audience and they sit to the side. Jocelyn says the four girls are going to perform with her. So cool. How many performances are we going to see? What's going to happen? All right, so they start. Jocelyn does about four performances and the girls come out in the last one. The first few, this is basically like a little mini concert for Jocelyn. This was not a real cabaret. The first three are just her singing and performing her songs and she does, she starts out with a pole routine and then she had one where she was kind of just like walking around in the audience. I mean, she did kind of describe this before in another episode, but in the back, the girls were back there twerking and dancing and doing it. And I'm like, why didn't she take advantage of the girls and have them out on the stage with her? They were her dancers. They could have been a hype man. They could have brought more energy to the show, just more just attraction. But instead, she just has them in the back waiting for this last song. And how is that a cabaret if this was there, even if this is their chance to prove to you what they can do? Why are they not out here? So... I thought she really missed the mark in terms of having them perform with her on the stage for the other songs. I don't know why she didn't do that. So these costumes, right? I have to interject about these costumes. These costumes are like feathers, and then that would be fine on the boobs. But then on the hip, it's like this elastic thing with little feathers hanging, and in the back, it kind of looked like a little poop. The costumes needed some work. But when they were sitting in a bunch, like in the back, just dancing to Jocelyn's music, they looked really cute. Why weren't they out on stage? One thing that really irked me when Jocelyn was out on stage was she was not pointing her feet. Point your feet. I'm going to teach you the importance of keeping your feet pointed as a dancer. Generally, you're gonna keep your feet pointed unless you're going for a certain aesthetic with a flex foot, but for the most part, you wanna keep your line straight and elegant, which means you're gonna point your feet. Pointing your feet does not mean crinkling your toes. Pointing your feet does not mean halfway pointing your foot. Pointing your feet means engaging through your ankle all the way down your foot. So right now my feet are just in a relaxed state, right? I've got a little bend in my knees, my feet are relaxed. But when you're dancing, you don't want to keep your feet relaxed or even worse, like this. Look, it kind of looks like my feet are screaming. You want to make sure that you point your feet. So there's a difference between pointing your feet and scrunching your toes. This is scrunching your toes, right? Just bunching your, your toes up. So to make sure that you're pointing your toes, that action needs to come from in here where your ankles are. So you wanna extend the line of your legs. So right now I'm just engaging my quads so my feet are lifting a little bit, see? So engaging my quads. From there, I wanna extend this line. So straight through here, I'm gonna keep bending. Straight through here, I'm gonna keep bending. And if you're not used to it, you might get a cramp in your foot here or if you've got other foot problems, but you can practice this. So practice pointing your feet. When you're just resting on your couch or wherever, you can think about engaging your legs, so squeezing through your quad, and just flexing and pointing. Flex, point. Flex, point. Also, when you're exercising, when you're hinging over, that's another one. You can grab a hold of your toes. Think about flattening your back, bending over, lifting your heels off the ground keeping your legs engaged, and then you can point through the feet 
and try to get a little further down. Um, you can also use resistance bands, but you might want to practice just pointing and flexing first because if you get too used to the resistance bands, sometimes when you're pushing against them to get you used to this motion and of pushing and engaging from the ankle, you might curl your toe like this, trying to push, or you might get stuck here in this half point. So really go through all the movements of it. So you can go from a relaxed foot to a flex foot, bring your toes towards your face. And you can do a half point, so you're you're reaching through the ankle, but you're keeping the toes flexed. This part of the foot is is arching up, and then you keep going and point the toes. Then you can go backwards, bend just the toes back, foot is still engaged. Then roll the feet back and flex. Half point, full point, half point, flex relaxed. So you can go through all the stages of it or you can just do the point and flex. I would do both but the more you do it the stronger your feet get, the stronger the stability in your ankles will be. It's good for your balance. It's just all around good to point and flex. You can also do it laying on your back. Point, flex, point, flex. It's good to add into your ab routine so when you're on the floor of course you can reach up for your toes point, reach for your toes. You can also do some side to side movement. But even here, just engaging your quads, you can see the difference. There's a micro bend here. Now I'm engaging my quads, pushing through here. Flex, point, flex, point, flex, point. Keep engaging through the quads, point. You can also take some circles around in both directions. Those will be good too. Some examples of what it looks like. So right here, my foot is just relaxed. If I curl my toes, looks weird. If I flex my foot, looks weird. If I half point, it looks weird. Pointed foot, engaged leg, looks really good. Engaging my leg, I'm squeezing from my quad so my knee is straight. I've got a little micro bend, which is a little bend in the leg. It's not quite as cute as this. So you want to think about keeping your leg straight, straightening from your quad, engaging your whole leg, pushing through this ankle, and keeping the leg straight and in alignment, not bending. And it definitely makes a difference when you're wearing shoes. So you can see the bend in the foot. Bend the foot. You can hide it when you're wearing shoes a little bit. You can get away with it a little bit more, but the line is still so much cleaner when you're pointing your foot. Okay, so here you can see I've got my boots on, engaging my quad. Right now my feet are pointed. Right now my feet are relaxed. And now my feet are flexed. So you can see a lot sexier when my feet are pointed than they are just hanging out or even worse flexed. So. Let's say I'm here with it. Right now I'm engaging my leg. Right now my foot's just hanging out. Relax. Right now it's flexed. It looks kind of weird. Right now it's pointed. So much better when it's pointed. Now there are times when you might flex for exaggeration. For example, if I flex, point coming up, flex going down. Point coming up, flex going down. That might be an aesthetic that you are doing, but generally you don't want to keep your foot flexed or just loose and lackadaisical. You want to point and engage. So another thing that you want to be mindful of aside from scrunching up your toes like this is of sickling your foot, which is when your foot is rotating one way or the other and not staying straight in the alignment with your leg. So. You don't want it doing this. I'm going to keep it straight. I hope this information helped. Just be mindful of what your feet are doing when you're dancing or performing. Um, having straight lines always helps, always looks a lot better. Engage through your quad, engage through your ankle, keep your foot pointed, keep it sexy. Did you hear the message? Point your feet if you were dancing on stage, unless it is intentional. Moving on. 
So then the last song, the girls come out, they miss their cues. So Jocelyn's mad and she's cursing on stage. And she likes to preach at them about their stage presence and decorum and things to do and not to do. I don't think it's appropriate to be sitting on stage cursing with like, what? No, you can't do that. Sit there and wait and just, you know, she should have been setting the stage, setting the premise, looking for the ladies. She even could have called them, ladies, where are you? I'm waiting. Like, you know, something. But just sitting there, it's not becoming. It's not making people want to come to this high-end performance. So then the girls come out on stage. They do the routine. Everybody does really good to me Chanel does look like she's doing a good job her face is all in it I'm like ah, is she ready she was looking cute but they all looked really really good and the other girls were on the sidelines um cheering them on and then when it was over Jocelyn gives this speech about how they were competing and one girl was gonna win and she chooses Chanel and I'm like okay I didn't see where that came from but I'm happy for Chanel. I like Chanel. I hope she gets that drinking under control. But, all right, she wins. And then Jocelyn gives the most disrespectful speech ever. She's like, well, she came to me. She was a pot belly drunk. And I didn't believe in her. But she's done well. And she deserves the $10,000. A pot belly drunk? This is not how you speak to people. What is she doing? So... All the girls seem happy. They all cheered her on. Chanel won. And then they're setting it up for the reunion. In the reunion, it looks like Jocelyn's going to fight somebody <laughs> or attempt to fight somebody. We see a lot of argument. Yummy showed up, which I'm surprised at because she's yay high and she got two girls at least that want to beat her ass at this point. Um, I'm interested to see what's going to happen because Jocelyn said she was greenlit for season three and they're going to Vegas. Okay, so in Vegas, what are you gonna do? Because I'm hoping maybe this is a little teaser, a little get to. I don't, I don't know. But in Vegas, you gotta really step it up a notch. So I'm curious to see what's gonna happen in Vegas. What season three is gonna be about? I've been watching some of the interviews with the girls behind the scenes, um, like talking about the season and stuff. And I, I'm curious to see what's gonna happen with them. I wish them all luck. It was an interesting season. <laughs> um, I would say this season was definitely entertaining. Um, I had fun watching it. I did like the girls. I liked their personalities. I didn't care for so much drama. Or I would have been fine with the drama if they were like 10 times more dancing. I wish that the girls learned more than one routine. I wish that we got to see them learning the routine and practicing. And not just the drama. Uh, I wish the actual cabaret was lit different because her routine wasn't that complicated. But when you add lights and, and shadows and things like that, everything looks much more, <laughs> you know, it, it looks much more elaborate. So it would have looked like more of a spectacle if she had those things going on. But because everything was so flat, you can really see how basic everything was so I wish there were more stage production in that sense like I think you can tell a party promoter put it together but I don't know if maybe Melissa because she said Melissa put it together I don't know if Melissa maybe had so much experience with aerial acts or performance acts or whatever other than maybe rappers and stuff like that on the stage because movement kind of needs to be lit differently in my opinion. Let me know what you thought of the season. I definitely intend to review P-Valley when it comes out. And if there's any other shows that you want to see me review, let me know. I've got some other things that I want to review for you. So that'll be coming up. And I'll see you for the next one.